Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good to see your faces. Can you see the PowerPoint? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you see the PowerPoint. Okay, good. Um, I, I am gonna mute everyone, but we do, uh, of course, allow interactive conversation and questions. So um, let us know if you have a question while we're moving along today. There's more of you online than there are in the room. So we wanna make sure that you get to ask questions as well. You can also type in the chat and give us a, a few minutes and we will address um, whatever's in the chat. And I, I am gonna record this session. Thanks for asking that question and reminding me. <laughs> we are gonna record this session. So let me back this slide up and I'll get that started for anyone that has to leave early or misses today. If I can do that. Do you see that? Really? I've never seen that. Okay. Yeah, see it Oh, I've never seen that. Okay. I've never seen that before. Okay. All right, so we're gonna jump in. Uh, we might still have some participants log in as we get going, but I'm gonna jump in here today. We're excited to have you with us for our Giving Tuesday Bootcamp. Um, this is the month that we really do the heavy donor engagement and marketing components of this program. So by now, most of you have already gotten your profile entered into our website. And many of you are maybe thinking about working on your profiles and figuring out how to engage your donors. And so we're going to give you the tools to do that today. Um, a handful of you are still working through compliance issues with Lauren or myself, and we're aware of those and, you know, we'll stay in communication with your organizations. If you are an organization with compliance issues, as long as you're making a good faith effort to um, get them handled, we will approve you for the campaign. However, if we've communicated with your organization and did not hear back from you and or haven't gotten any proof that you're handling your compliance issues, we won't be able to approve your organization for the campaign. So if you don't see your organization on the front end of our website, which will be in a whole lot today, um, give Lauren or I a call. You might be stuck in the compliance um, queue. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, if you'd like to type your name and organization into the chat like Scott did, feel free uh, so everyone can get to know each other. Um, and you can't, you can't really see it very well, but we do have some people in the room. Way, <laughs> Yep, we have a handful of people in the room. Uh, we're trying to reduce the amount of people in person, um, you know, to be safe, social distancing. Uh, we do have another session tomorrow afternoon. So if you have to leave early today, um, can't catch the recording or just would rather be in person, we actually still have, we still open for in-person seats tomorrow. I think so. I think we still have registrations available for tomorrow online and in person. It is in the Pines, in the Ocean Pines Library. So if that's convenient for you, feel free to sign up for that. Um, I've got with us today Lauren, our program officer, and Victoria, our marketing officer. If you've been in the program before, you're very familiar with all three of us. We're the main staff that supports the event um, on the front end, um, with the public side. And so let's jump in. We wanted to start with just a little summary of last year, and we did this at the information sessions too, but sometimes uh, we don't see the same participants and the same staff in each session. So we just wanted to mention um, how we did last year. Um, collectively, we had fundraised $269,627, which is really exciting, especially during a pandemic. We were deep into the, um, medium term effects of the pandemic and at this time of year. And so we didn't know how the community would respond to our campaign um, in its sixth year of operation last year. But they they respond, re responded very well. We had increased um, donations. Uh, you can see that we, hang on one second, I'm gonna mute, mute some people again. We increased donations across the board. We increased um, the number of transactions, the number of donors. 
Um, we have some ability to ask questions when donors are in the shopping cart. And so we ask them about their interest in volunteering for your organization and whether they're a first time donor. And so we capture all of those demographics. This is really interesting information if you're talking to your boards about why you should be a part of this campaign. Um, not only are you part of a collective giving and marketing campaign, but there were 298 offers to volunteer through the database and through the donors checkout cards. And so we encourage you to follow up with your donor um, spreadsheets and with the information that the database gives you because you can see that information on your donor data. Um, anyone that of course is interested in volunteering, hopefully your organization is following up with and allowing them to learn more about your organization and how they can do that. Uh, if, you're, if you aren't familiar with that or you haven't done that before, then you're missing an opportunity. Um, because that's a huge, you know, that's a huge um, part of, you know, what we do in the nonprofit world is not only do we need to fundraise and get donations, but we want people to volunteer with us and support our organizations. We will share this PowerPoint um, later. We have a whole resource drive available for you that we're going to be walking through today. So again, that's just a little review. Um, so Giving Tuesday, just to rehash the whole campaign, Giving Tuesday is an online giving event, provides you an opportunity to engage new donors, as well as give existing donors a creative way to give, uh, a more modern way to give, depending on the type of donor demographics you have. Um, if your donors aren't traditionally donors that are familiar with online giving, this, this campaign gives you a one, one time a year chance to sort of give them that opportunity, um, talk to you about how it works and be a part of it. Um, the goal of it is just to inspire all of us to work together to collectively fundraise here on the shore. We do keep this campaign local. It's Somerset, Wicomico, and Worcester counties, um, agencies that are located and serve residents of those counties. So only those entities are involved in the campaign, which is an advantage for us here on the shore. We know that this time of year is really hectic for you. November is sort of our ramp into um, the fall giving season and all of the heavy communications for donor engagement that we give. Many of you are working on fundraising letters for your annual appeals. You might be doing um, annual marketing updates that are in print form that go with solicitation letters. Uh, you might be planning, um, even though we're not doing a lot of in-person events now, we are still seeing them as they came back online this year. Uh, we have our own annual meeting this week, which is in person on Friday. So we'll have a few hundred of our best friends at the Civic Center this Friday. Uh, many of you are working on similar events, either fundraisers or annual check-in sort of events. And that makes November a great time to wrap this campaign into your messaging. So you don't um, you know, target lots of different messages at your donors and your constituents. You can wrap the messaging all together you know, and, and do that strategically. So um, with this campaign, you've got 24 hours to catapult your year-end giving. You actually have a week of early giving as well, which is a real advantage. Um, so we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about the different components, the engagement components of the campaign that are unique. And the first one is matching funds. Um, matching funds, how many of you, can you put your hand up if you're familiar with matching funds, if you've ever gotten matching funds to, to leverage fundraising? Okay, so some of you, anybody in here? Yeah, so some of you are. And some of you, give me a thumbs down if you're really not familiar with it. You're just not sure what matching funds is all about. Probably a couple of people. Um, it's, it's okay if you don't know anything about it. It's an advanced donor engagement strategy, but it works. And it's something that you should start trying within your organization. And this is where you would identify a corporate sponsor, a donor that's um, you know, very engaged in your organization, really understands leveraging or um, board member or members to challenge your other donors to raise money. And so essentially you would ask someone to put a certain amount of money aside to match whatever other dollars you raise. So commonly we see um, groups, for example, maybe they'll say, um, I've talked to my board. I have a small board, but I've talked to them. They really do wanna help us leverage funds. So they're agreeing to put up $500 between them for our fundraising. So the first $500 that you raise through the campaign, your board would match that with an additional $500. 
That's what matching funds are. And they can really engage the donors. If donors know that their dollar is going to get you another dollar, they'll, they'll really look for that in your campaign. And we have a way, Lauren will show you when she demonstrates the website, we have a way to indicate that you have a match. And we have these really fun tickers and real-time um, things on your feed that, again, let donors know that you have a match and how you're doing. So there's actually a real-time tracker of your matches and your overall fundraising. So if you've never considered having a match, never had a match, check in with some of your major donors. These would be, you know, maybe not your one-time donors or the donors that you don't have a real face-to-face -face relationship with, but the donors that come back year after year, the donors that you can go to now and then for special projects, um, the donors that maybe give a considerable, considerable amount of money every fall, they might be the type of donors you'd want to talk to. Um, board members are also really great for this. And even corporate sponsors. If you're an organization that regularly engages corporate sponsors, they get this kind of thing too. And they might be interested in supporting you. And when Victoria comes up, she's going to talk a lot about marketing and, and how you can leverage through your marketing. So there might be some things there that will interest your corporate donors. Um, ambassadors. Um, so one of the things we've learned over the years is all of us that are here in this room today, we really care about this campaign. We're running the campaign. We're probably the people doing the behind the scenes work, but we're not always the people that are in the front of the organization, in the community, um, reaching out to everyone else. We might not be the social butterflies. We might not be the PR or the marketing people. We might just be someone that's introverted, um, not not in the community a lot. Right now with the pandemic, there are certain people that are not comfortable in certain spaces, in certain places. And so we're still somewhat limited on that. But there has got to be somebody in your organization that is that person. We all know the social butterflies. We all know the people that are going out right now, You know, whether they're wearing their mask and going to restaurants or they're going to community events that are outside. There are people that are outside in the community and those people should know about this campaign and that your organization is participating because they can be your ambassadors. They can share it. Um, if they're social media um, experts, people that are on social media a lot, then ask them to share the information for you that your organization is participating. And again, Victoria is gonna make it really easy for you to help people be your ambassadors with the social media. But um, think about that now because we have found in the past, especially with our smaller organizations, and we have a lot of small nonprofits here on the shore, we're, we're very, uh, our capacity is small. You know, we might have just a handful of people really involved and the, none of those people are the public facing people. And so you've got to find other people. This will not work if you can't promote it, publicize it and talk about it in the communities. And so think about that now. We've got um, a whole month, but the whole month of November <laughs> to work through these things. These are all things that, all of these bullets that I'm going over now are things that you can work on in the next two to three weeks before scheduled giving starts and sort of get nailed down and they'll help you be more successful. The next one again is social media. Um, this is critical. You've got to have someone in your organization or on your board or a donor or a volunteer that's willing to put your organization on social media for this campaign. This is an online campaign. It will not work for you if you can't be on social media. So um, Victoria is again going to give you lots of tools for that, but it's not going to be worth your time if you can't be involved on social media. It's a huge part of it. Um, fundraiser pages. One of the things that Lauren's going to show us today is how to utilize fundraiser pages. These can be a really fun engagement tool for the campaign outside of your organizational page, which is showing on the front end of the database. You can attach individual fundraiser pages, peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser pages. So an example would be as a, a staff person at the community foundation, I could create my own fundraising page on behalf of the community foundation. And I could challenge myself and my friends and family to fundraise on behalf of the community foundation. And so many organizations are now using these as strategies. They'll strategically engage their board, their staff, um, some of their committees, people that are close to them. You do wanna set these up before November 21st. We do lock the system down around that time frame, November 21, 
we'll lock the system to all changes because we open to pre-scheduled giving on the 22nd. So that's why I said, all these things I'm talking about today are important to tackle and figure out in the next three weeks. But that's a really fun way to engage people in your organization. We've seen lots of um, fun competition. You can, as your own peer-to-peer -peer page, you can put your own pictures on there. You can name it what you want. So you can have some personal um, you know, touch to it. So I would encourage you to check that out. Lauren's gonna show you how to do that when she gets to website demonstration. Um, do I want my nonprofit to focus on a specific prize? This is good to think about now also. On the giving day, we do give $10,000 of incentive prizes to all the organizations that are participating are able to access that. Um, five of those prizes are completely random. We call them golden tickets. We pull them right after five o'clock PM. Anyone that hasn't won a prize in the daytime can win one of those golden tickets. Um, each prize is $1,000, and the first five prizes are related to unique donor gifts. And so these are the prizes that if your organization wants to try and compete for, you probably need to create some targeted messaging to your donors, to your board, to whoever you're reaching out to. So you would, for example, um, pick the time frame that you're competing for. Uh, an early example, uh, first thing in the morning, I think there's a 7 to 8 a.m. time frame. That's like the very first time frame. Um, if you are an organization that has a lot of donors that are typically alert and moving around from 7 to 8 a.m., that might be the time slot you want to pick. And you would communicate to them, we would really like to win this $1,000 incentive prize between 7 and 8. Please target your gifts in that time frame. And um, we see lots of fun competition in that way, too. There are, there are those prizes all through the day from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if evening is your better time frame, you're familiar with your constituents, like maybe you want to call some constituents in the daytime and talk to them about this, maybe you pick the evening one, like the 4 to 5 p.m. hour, or if you want to get people after they get off work in the daytime, maybe you're targeting that one. Um, but you do need a bit of a strategy. You, you Usually organizations don't win these prizes by just randomly falling in those time slots. We usually see concerted efforts towards those prizes. So when you get a chance, um, look at all of those prizes on the list, look at the hours that we're trying to engage, and then you can pick and communicate that. Heather, yeah. do, you, do you know what the most popular time frame was? Like which hour you got the most energy? Yeah, we see a lot. We see the early, like around the times we're not at work. So like that seven to eight, then there's a lunchtime one, 12 to one, that's popular, and then four to five. Those three were kind of the most popular, but there's a few others in the daytime. Um, so yeah, we see different things. Educators, I can already tell you if you're on the phone, if you're on the phone or in the room, educators tend to go for the seven to eight because teachers are going to school in the morning, administrators are going to school in the morning. So if you're not an educator, I probably want to spend my time on the seven to eight time slot. Yeah, County always nails that one. <laughs> yeah, they, the educators are really on that time slot. That's their, you know, that's their, that's their the early birds. Um, but most of the other ones you can, you can really have a chance at. We will <laughs> only let each organization win one prize. So you will get a chance at every hour. Did I have a question online? Um, Lauren, this is Cheryl. Can you hear me? Yep, we hear you. Thank you. If you don't mind, can you repeat the questions that are in the classroom? So that oh, yes. the question that you're answering. Yes, thank you, Cheryl. I will okay, do that. Okay, you're quite welcome. <laughs> Someone had asked the question, are there certain hours that are already more popular than others? And so I was mentioning that the seven to eight a.m. time frame is usually competition for educators in the K through 12 environment. They're all active very early in the morning, teachers and administrators. So we often see almost exclusively education-based fundraisers focusing on the seven to 8 a.m. The other popular hours are the lunchtime hour and the hour at the end of the day from four to five. Hey, Heather. Yeah. Do you have a waiting room on the Tupperware? You have a waiting room? No, you shouldn't. I don't think so. But somebody emailed and asked if it wasn't in. Oh, really? I just sent them away. That is a setting. I mean, that is a setting yeah, on these I things, but. I disabled it. Yeah, we I usually just say, okay. okay, thank you. Sure. Sorry, guys, a little technical troubles. <laughs> um, okay, annual appeal letters. I mentioned this earlier. If you're working on any end of the year messaging, 
just try not to blast out all different messages to your donors. Like, hey, you know, like if you have an annual appeal letter, wrap your Giving Tuesday message in it. Let them know that you are part of the campaign, that you appreciate their end of year gift through their traditional method, but also if they would like to visit the Giving Tuesday website and be a part of that collective giving campaign, they can do that too. Um, if you're having events, if you are the type of group that's having events this fall, you can, um, if you're having them between November 22nd and November 30th, when the giving is open, you can actually put little tablets or laptops at your event and encourage people to give right then. So you can engage people starting November 22nd. So anything you're doing in the communities after November 22nd, I would encourage you to get people to the website to ask them to give. Um, the, the only challenge, I mean, we, we write this here because in the past we have gotten communications from friends of the foundation and other donors and those of us that participate in a lot of other organizations, we see those mixed messages. We'll see, we'll get a ticket invite for a gala. We'll get an annual appeal. We'll get a Giving Tuesday letter. We'll get a fundraiser letter. And, and they're all different, like four or five different communications, not mentioning the shared fundraising methods. And so it can be a little overwhelming, especially when you think about the 400 organizations on the shore that are sending all of those communications this fall, particularly this month. This is the heaviest month for those communications as donors prepare their year-end gifts next month. And so anything you can do to consolidate your message, make it more meaningful, is really going to be impactful to your donors. I would send those messages before Thanksgiving. Again, you're trying to engage people either during the campaign or during your end of year December giving timeframe. Um, we see a great number of donors motivated between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas to make their end of year gifts to organizations. Any questions about those um, engagement concepts? Anyone online have any questions? about those. I think, I mean, some of these concepts you're probably familiar with and some of them might be newer to your organizations. If you are interested in getting assistance with any of these, we can provide like templates for annual appeals. Um, we have fundraiser um, tutorials and all kinds of things to help you get started in these ways. Okay. And then there's just a few more of these. Um, engaging the board. Uh, I would encourage you to engage your board in this campaign if you can. Um, of course, that depends on the dynamics of your board and if they're a fundraising board or not. Um, but, but typically our boards do engage with us in a lot of different ways in our organizations. And if you let them know that you are participating in this campaign, they will visit during Giving Tuesday and make a gift online. Or they will, um, if you have someone, if you have people on your board that aren't financially able to give or just um, you know, maybe have given their gift in some other method this year, ask them to be one of your social media ambassadors. Ask them to do some sharing on the day of. Um, there's quite a lot of um, social media activity. We can't, like I said, all of us in the room can't be the only people doing it and can't keep up with it all. So um, ask them to be a part of it. Um, the first few years that we participated, we used incentive prizes to get our board engaged. That could be an option for you. Um, I can give you an example. Like the first year, we had a cake, a Smith Island cake donated to our organization by a board member. We could have gone to a corporate sponsor as well or gone straight to a cake company, but we basically had a cake donated. And we told our board members, every time you engage in the campaign in this way, which was to share on social media, to give to any organization in the campaign, or to um, come to one of our events. At that time, we were hosting a lot of events. We would put a raffle ticket in for the cake. And that, that first two years, we engaged the board. We used that method. And it worked pretty well. We had a whole hat full of raffle tickets by the end of the campaign, and somebody won a cake. We don't have to do that anymore. It's been, this is year seven. Um, our board gets it. They they don't all participate, but we have a very large board. We have 25 on our board, so they don't all participate, but a good number of them do. And for us as the umbrella organization, we're not really asking them to give to us. We're asking them to give to you. We're asking them to come into the campaign, look at the hundred or so nonprofits 
that are there and support their favorite ones. And we do see that. So talk to your board about it too. Make sure that your board knows, um, you know, that, that you're being a part of this campaign. And if you think you'd like to use an incentive, food is a really powerful incentive. Consider just using food. It's, it's easy, fairly inexpensive. Um, how do you communicate with your donors? Again, just think about all the methods of communication that you're creating right now to go out in November. If you have print marketing, if you have letters, solicitation letters, um, maybe you're doing e-campaign newsletters, you know, or e-blasts. Just again, have a little message in the bottom of each one that says, hey, did you know our organization is participating in Giving Tuesday? Give them the dates for giving, show them the website, and then you know, you've, you've done your job there. Um, press and media spots. If you are an organization that does have paid marketing or even free marketing that you typically get from area, um, print, TV, radio, try to get on there to talk about Giving Tuesday this month. Uh, we'll be doing some of that here at the foundation. Victoria manages that for us. Um, she and Erica and our 47 ABC partners will do media on behalf of the whole campaign. And some of you that are participating in the past have seen that media over the years. We do have some TV spots. We do have some radio spots um, and we do some press for the campaign. And so we do our part, but we can't do it all. With over a hundred agencies or about a hundred agencies in the campaign, if we all did that, if we all started using our spots and all saw what media we could get, think about the impact we could make in the community. Um, you want to do those things um, between November 22nd and November 30th, maybe a little bit earlier. Victoria will give you a lot more marketing timelines when she comes up. Um, and then this one, the next bullet is new this year, outdoor signage. Um, we had learned from the national campaign that for whatever reason in today's age, that outdoor signage, using outdoor signage at our businesses to talk about the campaign can help engagement. So if you have a digital sign or you even have one of those old placard signs, you know, that you stick the letters on, um, put the website up there, mention it, um, talk about it, you know, during during the giving, during the open giving time. Just like with all billboard and, and signage media, if you talk about it too early, you'll lose people because when they see it, they want to go right then and look at it. And so, um, you know, maybe you want to do that again in the giving dates between November 22nd and November 30th. We're going to reach out to some of our partners. We don't, unfortunately, we don't have a sign like that here at the Community Foundation, but we are going to reach out to some of our nonprofit partners and ask them to help us with it. Maybe some of our business partners. But if you have a, sign, a signage and ability to do that, um, don't hesitate to put that website on there. And then the last one is just about online fundraisers or events. If you're doing, I wanted to mention online fundraisers because I know a lot of people are doing um, online silent auctions or online virtual auctions this fall. If you're building one of those right now, perhaps in the narrative for that event, you can have a piece about Giving Tuesday and say, you know, we're so glad you're here for this silent auction, for this virtual event, for this virtual gala whatever it is, but did you know we're also participating in Giving Tuesday? And here's that website and here are the dates that you can give. So again, just wrapping it in everywhere that you can. And I am gonna turn it over now to Lauren and she's gonna show us some website things. Hi, everybody. So I get to get into kind of the dry technical stuff now. Um, but so I want to show the website and you know, we're in the period now where everybody is registered and you've either started your profile, you know, you may have finished it or think you're finished it. Um, but we have profile editing open until November 22nd. So you can get in there and I want to show you some of the features and some of the things you might not have played around with yet and some of the ways to kind of build it out some more. Um, and then we'll just take a look at some of the other features on the website and I'll show you what's available. I want to make sure everybody knows what is available. We have a lot of resources on here uh, and there's a lot of features. So I want everybody to take advantage of it. I'm just going to click this. Uh, 
Oh, I have a website. So this is the website. Um, you're all familiar with that. I'll log in. I'm going to log in as a nonprofit. So it should look like yours does. So this is your dashboard when you first log in. This is what you see. Um, here's the announcements box over here. Make sure, obviously, you've all seen it because you got registered for this, and that's where the link was. But keep an eye on that because if we have any you know, pertinent information or reminders, we'll put that up there. Um, these are your deadlines. So I get a lot of people asking sometimes, you know, when does schedule giving begin? When does profile editing end? Fund fundraiser deadlines. They're all on here. So anytime you need to know that, um, they're there. They're also in the participants manual, which I'm going to show you at some point. Um, so down here, if you haven't already, it was one of the first thing that asks you when you register or, or submit your profile is what your goals are, um, but they're not required. So you may have bypassed them. Um, so if you see down here, these are all zero. Now, not like I said, none of these are required, but they can be helpful and engaging features. Um, so if you haven't set a dollars raised or donations received goal, um, this you can update your goals right here. So that can be engaging, you know, to have a goal. Sometimes people like to see if you have a certain goal and you're working towards it and they see that you're getting close, they kind of get excited to help you reach that goal. So it can be helpful. Um, I had somebody ask me what's a reasonable number for these. Uh, I would say it's completely up to you. Um, just keep in mind, you know, the small window of time that we have for this, um, but just something that you think is reasonable for your organization, uh, but it's gonna be totally, you know, different for everybody. So that's gonna be up to you. Um, so Heather mentioned matching funds. You can update your goal for matching funds here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so you can enter if you if you find a match, if you didn't enter one when you signed up or when you got started, you have options here. The peer to peer goals. I want to clarify just in case anyone's not sure what that is, because I did have a question about that, too. Um, so it asks if you for the fundraising page goals, it asks you two questions. One is the number of pages and one is the dollars. So the dollars you can pick however much you know you want people to be able to raise for you. But the number of pages, you want to keep that small because this is talking about the people that are going to create, you know, peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser pages for your organization. You're not going to have 20 or 30, you know, people creating whole pages. So we want to keep that number small. Um, but the dollars, that's up to you. So you can do that there. Um, this here will show your early giving progress. You can have a goal for that if you want. Um, that one's not quite as big a deal as the other one. But this, once we get to November 22nd, it's going to show here. None of the early giving shows on the main screen, on the main ticker. Um, nothing shows until the day of because we, you know, we want it to really look like that 24 hour day. Um, but you can see on the back end here what your what your progress is. What is the early giving timeline? Um, it's from November 22nd to November 30th. And see, it says here, back here, it's also in your oh, deadlines. Okay. Yep. So, um, so if you think, if, if you forget in the future and you want to know, just you can check your deadlines. And then fundraising um, page progress. You can also see that. You can, there's a feature here too to export fundraising page info if you want to export it. So we'll just kind of walk through these. Um, I want to talk about profile editing. Like I said, I want to show you the features that are available. This is the basic stuff. You should have done this already. Um, if you want, you can go back in and see this is the public facing content. If you didn't know what that was going to look like and you see it now and you I'm going to pull it up and, and you want to change something that's where you can change that that public facing information. But this is where that'll show you know the more about us. Hide that. <clears throat> I have a question in chat.
Okay, so I have a question. I see a question in chat that says, can you clarify what you said about limiting number of fundraising pages? So there's not an actual limit to it, but um, the fundraiser pages are gonna show up on the website and you can have technically as many as you want, but it's also something you, you know, you want to keep a res reasonable expectation for. You're probably not going to have 20 or 30 people creating whole pages for your organization. Um, it also really overwhelm the website, but here I'll just, no, we don't, well, the, yeah, is it open? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is, but no, so we don't have any fundraising pages yet. It doesn't look like. Um, but they're gonna go on. Oh, there's oh, two. There are, some. there are two. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have two so far. Oh, um, cool. But this is so. This is what they look like. Well, they can look like whatever um, the that's person nice. making it wants it to. But, but yeah. So, so there's not an actual limit. It's not gonna cut you off or anything. But, um, but if you're saying like how many pages that you want to be created for your organization, it's not gonna be some, you know, it's not gonna be a hundred. That's just an, probably an unreasonable number. Whereas the dollars is more flexible. It's whatever, you know, be as ambitious as you'd like. Did that answer your question? Okay. So let's see. Okay. So, Yep, this is your basic information here. Um, we tried to check down here the links for websites and social media. We tried to tr um, check all those as you guys submitted your registrations because there's a lot, a lot of people um, seem to get confused for the Instagram link. They put their handle in instead, you know, the at something. That won't work. This is just, this is a hyperlink on the website. So if they go to click on that, the handle won't bring them to the page. It'll be a broken link. Um, so. If you want to double check when you go to your when you go look at your public facing page, these are all your icons down here at the bottom. So you can double check if you want. We should have caught it if it was broken, but just in case, if you want to be sure, go check right here. Um, these icons here are the shares. So when you see this Facebook and Twitter, um, that's for sharing. So if I click on this, it's going to share this page to Facebook. But if I click down here, it's going to take me to their Facebook page. So for the other features, the more dynamic features of the profile, they're all on these tabs over here. And I can't see them, but I'm going to wing it. So, okay, donation levels. Um, I actually clicked on Women Supporting Women on purpose because I like their donation levels. I'm going to show them as an example. Um, but this shows up in the donor cart. And let me get to, let's see. Do we have, hang on. So this is the magic site that lets me change the mode that we're in because we're in pre-scheduling right now, countdown mode. So we're going to go to women supporting women. I don't know if I have anyone from women supporting women on today, but we're, we're going to show off your page. How did you get to that page? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was the question? How did you get to their public page? Just now I typed their name into the chat. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, into the search bar here where it says find organizations. But there's okay. several ways to do it. You can here. I'll show you. From the main page, you can go to donate or donor donate nonprofits. Um, you can search by their name here. Um, you can because it'll take keywords, it'll take locations, things like that. Um, yeah, that's the easiest way to do it to type it up in this search bar up here. So you won't see these buttons right now, the, or you'll see the fundraise, but not the donate now button, because this is this is pretending it's scheduling mode. Um, but I'll show you what those donation buttons look like. So this is what they look like. They're also not required. You don't have to have them. Um, but 
they're great because you can put, you know, suggested amounts and then you put this little um, description underneath. And basically you're not, you're not promising the person that their money is buying this item, but what you're doing is, is letting them know what that amount of money can do. So that can be really, you know, engaging when, when donors are looking at that and they see, you know, it, it puts something real to their dollar amount. You know, it says, they say, you know, maybe they were going to give $20, but they see that $50 will, um, you know, go to mem uh, honor a survivor or, you know, they see these different things and they're like, oh, you know, what? that's great. I'm going to do that. You know, it's just a suggestion. And then they always have the, the option down here to put in a different amount. Check your chat again. Fundraiser pages, so I have a question in the chat. Fundraising pages, what's the difference between those and peer-to-peer? -peer? They're the same thing. Um, sorry if that's confusing. They, they just use different language, some different places, but fundraising pages and peer-to-peer -peer pages are the same thing. Okay, so. Let's get back to. Way too many tabs open. <laughs> Let's do it this way. Okay, I think we're in the right spot. So that was the donation levels. You can edit them here. You can add a donation level. It'll ask you for that little description. Just make sure your description is small enough to fit under that button on the screen. You don't want to write a paragraph there. The next um, tab is the multimedia tab. So this is where you add your photos and videos. Um, you can, it's very simple. You use this button up here, add multimedia, and you can add a photo or you can select a YouTube video or a Vimeo and give it a title. And so that's what we saw over here. No, nope. over here, yeah. See, they've got great pictures. Got a whole slideshow of pictures. Do we have any ability to link um, uh, TikTok videos? Mm, we don't have that yet, but that's a good that's a good suggestion though. That's Next year. We, yeah, that's something we'll take back to the, the tech team because that is a yeah, good suggestion. We, we're using them a lot and they, yeah. they uh, yeah, it's more fun for us, so good. Thank you. Yeah, they're increasing in popularity, you know, drastically. So that is a good suggestion. And I just wanted to update you. I wouldn't have updated your deal in the chat for you. Oh, thank you. Okay. So any questions about anything so far? So next is programs. This is a tab on your profile. Um, so up here, you've got these tabs on your public facing profile. Um, so, and they're all optional, but they're just all, you know, ways for you to get more information out about your organization. Um, you know, this is a really great, Giving Tuesday is a great opportunity for donor engagement and for publicity and for getting information out there. So um, there's information on this one for a program. So you can list, if you have specific programs that you're working on that you want people to know about, you can do that or like in ours, in our um, profile, we have uh, our Help Your Neighbor program listed because that's what we raise money for. We don't raise money during the campaign. We don't raise money for our organization in general. Everything that we raise goes to our Help Your Neighbor program because um, that doesn't have a committed donor. So we, raise, uh, we use this programs tab to talk about the program there. Next is events. So this can be whether it, this can be either, you know, if you're having any Giving Tuesday events, which this year are probably, if you're doing it, probably virtual, but, um, but we have a lot of people do, you know, fundraising events for Giving Tuesday. So they'll have a day either, you know, during scheduled giving, sometimes they'll have an event where they'll have people come and, and they will have, you know, when it's in person, they'll have tablets and things set up so that they can make their donation right there. Um, you know, you're, you all are very creative. So if you figure out a virtual way to do that, this is a place that you can, you can uh, 
post the event. You can also post information about any events your organization's having that you want people to know about. So if you have any end of year fundraisers or even early next year fundraisers coming up or just any kind of events that you want people to know about, you can add that there. There aren't any on this one, but they show up very much the same way and it's just the information. And finally, volunteer. So this, is, this part is new this year. So I can't show you any, we don't have any to demonstrate, but um, last year they added that volunteer question in the donor cart to ask people if they were interested in volunteering for your organization. And so this is like the uh, perfect complement to that. Um, this is where you can add information about volunteer opportunities that you have. So now instead of you know just the donor just saying they're interested in volunteering. I actually set them up if you want to show. Did you? But look under uh, hands and hearts ending homelessness. I set two of them up in there. It's okay. Volunteer. It's helpful. <clears throat> okay. Awesome. So here's an example of that. So now you can publicize any volunteer opportunities that you have. And that way, you know, donors know what they're volunteering for, or people know what they can volunteer for. And they might be more encouraged to say yes if, you, if they see that you have active volunteer opportunities right now. Um, but it's a great way to engage volunteers. And this information goes into your donation information. Um, I'll show that in a few. Um, but you can export all that information. So it's, they make it really easy for you to export it into an Excel spreadsheet. And then you can you know, aggregate that data to make a list of potential volunteers. So that is pretty much it on building out the profile. Um, now, when people come to look, so next we'll, we'll look at fundraisers. There's a couple different option or buttons for creating fundraiser pages, but if somebody wants to create a fundraiser page for you, they just have to come to your page and click one of these buttons. And um, there's also, we have resources in a few different places about fundraisers. So if you have questions about them or about building out the page, there are a few different places that you can look. Um, one's in the resource center, which I'll show you in a little bit. One is also gonna be on the Google Drive, which I'll also show you in a little bit. So I'll, I'll show you all that stuff when we get there. But, um, but if you click on this, where are we? Yeah, so it's gonna take, it's gonna give you the opportunity to create a fundraiser page. I think that one already had one or something, but. Yeah, you, you know what else, Lauren? I learned something when I was working on that profile. You can pick as an organization a, de a default picture that you want to come up. Oh, with okay. So if someone that's what it is. Then. something, it'll have a default. So that's a default picture that I picked. Gotcha. Okay, so over here, yeah, there it is. Personalize your fundraiser page. So it'll bring this up and you can personalize it. You can add pictures or change out the picture, um, put a description. And then your fundraiser page has its own URL too, or, or whoever's creating them, you can let them know. And in the participant manual that I'm gonna show you on the in the resource center, there is a sheet. It's for, you'll see it, it's for fundraiser pages and it's designed to be something that you can print out and give to people. So you'll, if you read it, the language is like you talking to your donors or your volunteers or you know your board or whoever it is. So you can print that one sheeter and hand it out to people. It's got information, it's got, you know, encourages them to, to do it. So it's, um, we created that so that you have a way, you know, an easy way to encourage people to create fundraiser pages for you and give them the information all, in one, all at once. Um, da, 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 let's see. Before I get to the resource center, let's see, maybe prizes and leaderboards. So many times. They added this too. Okay, so in the FAQ, there is now a drop, this is brand new, they just added this. There's a drop down for fundraisers. So there's information there. That's another one of the places you can find it. 
FAQ for prizes, it's got the hours here. So if you're interested in knowing what the hours are for the prizes, it's on the FAQ page. Um, and then the basic rules there. The leaderboards, this is where on giving day, see if I can pull that up for you. Don't know if it'll show anything yet, but it will change, show you what it's gonna look like. Yeah, so on the leaderboard, you've got our ticker here, number of donations, and then you've got all this stuff here. It shows who is raising what, it shows when matches are met, it's got that little trophy. And so that's just kind of a fun thing to watch. And it's also got the prizes here. So prize winners will show up here. So if you, you know, if you're looking, if you're going for a specific prize in an hour, um, we do announce the hourly prizes at the time. The golden tickets are at the end of the day. Uh, we do that because uh, like Heather said, everybody can win one prize. So we give you the opportunity to win the hourly prizes. And then at the end of the day, we pick the golden tickets. And so that way we, you know, if somebody already won an hourly prize, they won't get the golden ticket. We'll, we'll go with the next person that comes up. But the hourly ones we will post after the hour, at the top of the hour. I do want to show you what the donation information looks like for anybody who hasn't, isn't familiar with it or who wasn't at the public, I think I went over it some at the public info sessions, but just in case, I'm going to show you real quick and then we're going to go to the resource center. Sweet. Okay, so I'm going into my admin so that I can pull up an organization that isn't real, so you don't see real donor information. Okay, so you go to that donor information tab, and this is how it shows up. Um, you've got all your donor information here. Um, when you, If you don't see information there, it's because they chose to donate anonymously. That is an option for them. Um, but there's a button here to resend their receipt. If they happen to ask for it, they will get one automatically. There's also a feature this year on the front facing website that allows them to request it. So on the main Shore Gives More page at the bottom, donors can request a copy of their receipt. Um, but you can export this information. So there's an export button up here. Um, so this is how you can take it all out and you can aggregate it, you can sort it, you can put it into you know, your database, but this is they make it really convenient for you right there. And then you can also filter so if you look here, um, this will always, just remember this, this will always show you all of your historical data by default. So if you've participated multiple years, it's gonna be showing you all of them. So if you go and export this and you total it up and you're like, I didn't raise $20,000 this year, it's showing you all. So you can filter that. Um, you can filter it right here, or you can filter it in Excel after you've exported it. Okay, so is there anything else that I should show before I get to the resource center? Let me see if there was anything else on here that I didn't talk about. Oh, I will mention one more time your personal personal URL. You your each page, each profile has its own URL. Let's go back. Yeah. Okay, so here I'll show you. When are you is your is your profile public? I don't know if it's public or not. Yeah, it must be because I just looked at it and realized I didn't have my programs put in. Oh, okay. So, so here in the my public profile, um, the, under the acronym, so you can still edit your profile. 
you can click on edit my profile and then you, or no, I'm sorry, not the acronym in the custom URL field. So it says custom URL and you will just put your acronym in there or whatever you want to put, but something simple and recognizable. And that'll just tack it on to the end. And then that'll be, but you should also be able to go to your your profile. And if you click into it and then copy and paste the URL from the browser, you should be able to do that. But um, but if that doesn't work, then maybe just check to make sure you've got yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So yeah, you'll just want to make sure you do that because that's how you can, you know, you can copy and paste that onto any of your social media accounts to show or to link people directly to your page. Okay, so this is the really important part. Um, up here, everybody look at the screen. Up in the top right corner here is your resource center. You definitely want to know about that because um, that, you know, probably the most important reason is because it's where the marketing toolkit is, which is what Victoria is going to show you. Um, but I'm just going to show you a little bit more before I turn it over to her. You've got, so this is what I was talking about before with the fundraiser support center. There's all kinds of information here. If you want that, they've got all kinds of things uh, available. Question and answers, tutorials, things like that. Then there's just a bunch of general um, fundraising resources as well for nonprofits. So just feel free, you know, on your own time, check out what they have available. They've got a lot of cool stuff there. There's the um, support center right here. So you have that. There's a help center, there's help center articles. And then this is our marketing um, toolkit up here. But before we look at the marketing kit, the marketing bootcamp folder is here. So this is where you will find the PowerPoint that we're looking at today. It's also where you'll find this, the full participant guide. So we create this for you as kind of just a nice packaged way to have all this information. And it's also where that fundraiser um, uh, white sheet is that I was telling you about. But it's got a table of contents. It's got Giving Tuesday overview, last year's data. Here's your important dates again. So like, if you want to just, you can just print this manual out and just have it. So you have everything kind of collectively, you just stick it in a folder or a binder or whatever, and you've got it right there. You've got all the- I'm sorry, yeah. is there a template in there for the um, So, so somebody asked if the template is in here for the fundraiser ask. So um, if you're talking about the letters and things, the letter templates, Victoria is going to show you those. There are some though. There are, uh, well, I'll show you what templates are in here, but she has additional ones in the, in the marketing kit. So there's your FAQs, but I thought I just did. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you just answered it. No. <laughs> there she did ask. Thank you. Um, so here's your fundraiser sheet. It's a front and back. So you'll want to print it on the front and back. Um, here's, yeah. So there's some templates here, tips for securing matching funds. Um, first, there's just a bunch of tips, and then there's a couple templates for that, if you want to use those. Um, but the, then Victoria will show you some more. Here's the prize structures again, and the marketing kit kind of overview. Sponsor requirements, we do have some sponsor requirements, Victoria will talk about that. This is the unselfie tutorial. So I don't know, if, I don't think Heather talked about that this time. <laughs> We talked about it at the public info sessions, but um, but here's your templates for this if you want to use it, or you can create your own. But these are the ones that we have created for you, and there I think there's some more in the marketing kit um, that you'll see in a few minutes. But this was a fun campaign that we started last year or the year before. Um, so a lot of people did this. You print this out and you write what you give for, and you have someone take a picture and you post it. It's really fun. A lot of people did it and we had, we got a lot of great pictures. We have a whole collage of them somewhere. So that's your, that's your manual. So I recommend, you know, if, if you're looking for information or you wanna keep it all organized and together, just print that manual out and you'll have it to, to reference. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you and then I promise I'm done talking is this. This is new this year. So this is a step-by-step -step guide for those of you who really want, you know, some extra guidance or, you know, like to be like me, I really like to do anything I can to be organized and, and have a plan for things. So this is, you print this out too. I mean, or you can type them here, but you would print it out and it's a workbook. So 
I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna go through all the details of it. I'm just gonna show you, but you can go back and look. So it's got things. It walks you through kind of step by step things to do, and then it asks you questions and it helps you get all your thoughts together and get your you know your marketing strategy organized asks you questions, gives you timeline type things, but it's all fillable. And it's all organized in a way that makes sense and kind of helps you. It gives you a workflow essentially. But that's, I mean, that's totally up to you. It's there if you're interested. It's that's in that uh, marketing toolkit folder, the same folder or the same Google Drive. So that's the boot camps. And then the most important thing in the resource center is the marketing kit. Um, that's what you're all here to see. Um, this is what you're going to use. So I'm going to hand this over to Victoria now. Do you want the PowerPoint yeah. back up? Yeah. I don't know if you wanted that. Up. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm Victoria Kim, the marketing officer. I handle all of the marketing for the Community Foundation. Um, and I also help create some resources for all of our participating nonprofits um, for Giving Tuesday. So I'm just going to really quickly go over the toolkit that we provide for you. Um, Lauren touched base on the marketing kit in the Google Drive, and I will go into that in just a second. Um, but if you are struggling with marketing for Giving Tuesday, reach out to me. I can't do your entire campaign for you, but I can answer questions, make sure you have the resources that you need, um, anything of that type, I'm more than happy to help. Um, my contact information is in the marketing kit as well. Um, so let me go through the, um, get out of here, the marketing kit first. Um, just really quick, say under samples and scripts, um, if you want to send a, um, you know, board of directors engagement letter, that's in here. Um, one thing that I will say with any of these templates, please actually read through them and customize them for your organization. I can't tell you how frustrated I get every year. I say copy and paste it, but I mean copy, paste it and edit it. Um, every year there is some organization that on social media will directly paste the template and of different things and not edit it out for um, their own organization. And it will literally read something like, you know, join us on Giving Tuesday and support fill-in organization on, <laughs> so don't do that. Um, but this is just a sample um, board of directors engagement letter that we do. Um, social media post ideas. Um, these are ideas make sure that on your individual social media accounts that you are tagging differently for Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever platforms that um, you are using. Um, sponsor posts, we do have some requirements for sponsor posts um, because they, WMBT provides a significant amount of advertising for us. We pay for some of it, but they also donate a significant portion of it. Um, and so with all of our sponsors, we do have requirements that are listed in here. Essentially, we're asking for a total of three posts before, um, I'm sorry, I think it's four posts before the event and then one follow-up thank you. So five posts total um, on social media. Um, and I will show you in the graphics that um, you know, you're more than welcome to make your own, but we provide them for you so you don't even have to go to the trouble of, of creating your own if you don't want to. Um, you know, here's an example. We are so lucky to have sponsor name. Make sure you put the sponsor name in there. Don't just copy and paste that in there. Um, and then we have some sample like lead up posts. Um, obviously, if you just start the day of and go, oh, hey, it's Giving Tuesday, give us some support. Um, people are going to not be familiar with it. Um, so, you know, we have some that lead up now, my personal take on it is that I make sure that we sort of make it like a roller coaster leading up to the event. We're going up that roller coaster more and more and more and more promotion until we get to the day of, and then you're going down that roller coaster, just wrapping it up with, you know, your thank yous, how, you know, the impact, things like that. Um, pre-scheduling, some of these posts are going to be very, very helpful to you. Um, 
you can get a free Hootsuite account. Um, I believe Canva now allows some scheduling. Um, Facebook has its own um, scheduling tool. So use these to your advantage. Um, and as Lauren mentioned, or I think Heather mentioned, um, if you are not a nonprofit that feels savvy with social media, ask around your organization if there is somebody um, that does feel comfortable with social media and helping you with this. Um, teenagers are a great resource. College students, great resource. They're all very social media savvy. Um, but if there's something that you're really hung up on, feel free to contact me. Um, and then day of posts, um, you know, if you are going to be competing for a specific time slot or something, that's great information to post to remind people ahead of time, um, you know, give them an update along the way. Um, I know that, for example, I always see a little surge of giving at like 10 o'clock at night. Um, <laughs> I guess people are kind of winding down for the night and are on social media and they go, oh, so I always will post something, you know, around nine o'clock and say, hey, remember, um, just a few hours left to give, um, things like that you can certainly do. Um, I do another post at like 12.01 in the morning the day of say, hey, it's on, you can go ahead and give now, um, just really get them excited. There's not a lot of people on social media at 12.01 in the morning, but when they wake up, I'm hoping that they see that post. Um, and then also have your supporters, your board members, your staff, um, if they, or you know, your good volunteers, if they would like, I never say, you know, force anybody into promoting on their personal pages, um, but if they would like to promote, um, teach them how to tag the organization, um, because that's really important. Uh, uh, some people who are less savvy with social media may not know how to tag your organization in a post. Um, Giving your board a rundown ahead of time is a great, a great tool. Um, and also make sure your social media settings are set so that people can tag you. I run into that one a lot too. Um, so yeah, but talk about how, why this is important to uh, your organization, how this is gonna benefit uh, your organization, why they should give today instead of tomorrow, um, things like that. Uh, press release sample, this is our standard one that we um, use in our, um, you know, advertising and marketing for nonprofits class. It's um, how I set up most of my releases. Um, you can use that if you have something to send out to the media. I do send one out to the media before and after um, Giving Tuesday to get us some, some coverage. Um, but if there is something specific um, that you do want to do that has kind of a unique angle, you are more than welcome to use that. Um, or if you have other events throughout the year, some of these resources and tools are not just limited to Giving Tuesday. Yep. Um, so are you required to make the four posts before the? Yes, for this, uh, somebody asked if um, the, the requirement for uh, the sponsor post, yes, everybody is required to make the sponsor posts um, one, at least one for each sponsor prior to giving Tuesday, yes. And you can start those anytime. You can start them now, say, hey, you know, we just want to thank, you know, 47 ABC for, you know, supporting um, giving Tuesday and, you know, lower shore nonprofits. However you want to phrase that is fine. Um, getting into the graphics, um, we provide email footers for you. Um, all the logos that you could possibly need are available here. We have them for light backgrounds if you want to place them over um, and for dark backgrounds. Every year I have somebody ask me, um, you know, why don't you have a JPEG image? And that's because the PNG files work exactly the same as a JPEG image. They're accepted everywhere and they won't give you that white box background. Um, so we have them in a variety of sizes, layouts. Um, so if you, oops. Yeah, I'm not going to download this, but um, but pretty much. And then if you have somebody that for whatever reason asks you for a vector file, an EPS image, um, who's a professional graphic designer or something, have them contact me and I will provide that. Um, we don't hand that one out as readily just because we don't want people making edits to the actual logo itself. Um, but if there is a graphic designer that needs it for specific reasons, um, I'm happy to give them that. Um, let's see here, social media images. There's the countdown images, which are, you know, hey, three days giving Tuesday, two days giving Tuesday. 
Facebook cover photos. Um, the causes ones, there's about 110 in here. Um, and what I try to do is make sure that there are some posts for, um, you know, pretty much every organization. It doesn't, it just doesn't want to preview. It wants to download it for some reason. It, the view of the drive, to show yeah. Um, but these are things you can put your organization's logo on it. Um, like I said, there's about 110 images in there. So there should be something for that relates to every nonprofit. If you go through the images and you say, hey, Victoria, there's not one thing that seems to really relate to my unique cause or nonprofit, let me know. I'll whip something up for you. I don't, I don't mind doing that because will you reuse it again next year? Um, I just try to build on them every year and, and create some new ones. Um, and I will see if I can make for some reason. Can you go kind of with the document here at the top? Oh, maybe that's what it is. Normally it lets us preview them pretty well, but it may just be this computer. So if you have trouble getting there, let me know. I'll take a look. Um, but like I said, there's about 110 images in there. Um, and they, you know, have our look, the short gives more logo and stuff. You can place your own logo on them. Um, you can get a free Canva membership. Um, upload these images to Canva, put your logo in on top of it, download it, and there you go. Very simple, easy tool. Why would you do that? Because I actually just pay for that because it won't do it transparently. The PNG um, photos, the logos and things, um, if you, you have to upload your logo with a transparent background. Canva did just add a tool that will remove backgrounds. It's not 100% reliable. Um, but if you upload, whoever designed your logo, if you ask that, hey, do you have a version with um, a transparent background already in a PNG file, that um, then that should work for you. No problem. Um, let's see here. We also have some um, Twitter-based images. These are just sort of generic images um, for, um, you know, about Giving Tuesday, generic social media posts, and then your sponsor posts are right here as well, too. Um, so I encourage everybody to take a look through these resources and the social media images. That way, if there's something where you're going, I'm not seeing what I need, then we have time to get it together for you um, or direct you to where it is if, if you're not finding it. Um, but certainly take a look through these and figure out what's going to work for your organization. Pre-schedule them um, as best you can. Email um, footers are in here so you can attach them into the bottom of your staff email if you want. Um, let's see, we did logos and, just, and then there's a marketing flyer. Um, we set this up so that, again, same thing. If you want to plop your logo in right here, you can. Um, and this is something you can hang on the, the your office door that you can hand out to people in person. This is not designed to go out digitally to people. Um, face, I had a couple organizations last year that kept trying to post this on Facebook and they didn't understand why Facebook was cropping it. It is not designed um, for social media. This is designed as an in, in hand, in person resource. Okay, with scripts that. Um, if you have people that you want to um, kind of let them know what we did with Giving Tuesday last year and why this is such a beneficial event, this is our summary sheet of things um, from last year. Um, what we raise, what, how many donations. Um, we always keep this handy for a lot of, um, you know, people are saying, you know, what is Giving Tuesday? What's the impact? Um, your I Give for Unselfie templates are in here. Again, you can just print these off on your printer um, and then just use Sharpie um, to let people fill in what they want. Um, so, for example, I usually do one that says I Give for Autism um, or I Give for, you know, um, Animal Welfare. Um, those are some of the causes I really support a lot each year. Um, but it, it, it just kind of lets you have a fun way of showing off what causes are important to you. Uh, let's see here. Social media handle reference chart. This is important because um, this will save you some time. If you are trying to tag any of the sponsors um, on social media, um, you know, when you do those required posts, these have their... Um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter handles. Um, that'll save you a little bit of time so of having to try and look them up each time. So is it just those, those sponsors? Yes, yes. 
we try to keep it very simple, short and sweet so that you're not um, inundated with things to tag. Is that four posts on each platform or just a total of four spread out across the platform? Um, I would do what, I mean, if you have all three of those platforms, yes, then, you know, I would post one, you know, post all three sponsors on Instagram, all three sponsors on Facebook, all three sponsors on, on Twitter. Um, and then let's see your links and resources. Um, one of the most popular questions I get are, um, how do I create additional material um, or where do I get you know, stock images, things like that. So um, I created this for Giving Tuesday a couple years ago, but it honestly is a great resource for things year round. Um, you know, there's Canva, there's Adobe Spark, um, there's a couple, and a lot of these are free or have a low cost option. Um, some of them are, you know, do require um, paid, but for example, if you want to create a quick video, if you have an iPhone, the iMovie app on your iPhone, it's great. You can add a couple different shots in there, slice it, dice it, add some music, and you're good to go. Um, let's see here. There's um, different phone apps you can download if you need, you know, just want to do something from your phone. Um, stock photos, please do not Google image search and just rip an image off of Google. I will tell you from firsthand experience, you will end up with a lawsuit. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but at some point that is a great way to get dinged and cost your organization a lot of money. Um, a lot of times if you Google free stock images, um, yes, they'll be free, but then there's all this disclaimer text and it turns out it's actually not so free and you can only use it for certain things. Nonprofits are classified as commercial use when it comes to photography. Um, so if you are reading a disclaimer that says, you know, free for personal use, but not for commercial use, you are commercial use. Um, you are fundraising, you're a commercial entity, you are using this to promote something to the public. Um, these are websites that I have used um, professionally on a regular basis. I have a paid subscription to Adobe Stock. It's like 30 bucks a month. Um, I highly recommend that to any nonprofit if you are um, regularly in the need for stock photography, um, just because then it's licensed to you and you are safe. Um, always, always read, even on these you know, free resources here, please read the disclaimer text as their terms of use can update at any time. Um, that's just my fair warning. Um, these websites have been good to us in the past, but I always each year make sure I read any updated terms of service. Here's um, low cost options. Um, Getty Images is the most expensive one of them all, but it has everything underneath the sun. Um, Adobe Stock is, oh you know, yeah, 10 photos I think for $9.99 a month. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. Um, and that's what we use here. So I, uh, I highly recommend that if you want to just be on the safe side and you can, if your nonprofit has that sort of budget. Um, so a lot of really great things. Um, Facebook ad creation, if you want to do paid social media, I highly recommend that. Um, these have a ton of tutorials that you can use. Um, lots of different uh, Facebook and Instagram ad tutorials. Um, Twitter. Advertising, I personally don't do it very often because for a nonprofit budget, it is more expensive than the other options out there. Um, they have minimum spend levels that are harder for some nonprofits with smaller budgets. And I know at a lot of nonprofits, you have zero social media advertising budget. <laughs> so uh, this, is, this is put together with the idea that, you know, we're working on a budget here. Um, social media management, You've got your uh, Facebook post scheduling at Hootsuite. Um, you can do you know, 30 scheduled messages for free usually. Email marketing, uh, MailChimp, constant contact, website building. Um, so we have a lot of really great resources in here. Um, if you want to learn more and dig through them, I highly encourage you to do so. Close some of these tabs here. I think, let's see here, that's everything in the toolkit, I believe. Oops, let me just scroll down here. I can't see the screen very well. Um, 
I will add some additional resources to the files as we get them. For example, the TV commercial we'll be producing um, in the next week or two, I will upload a copy of that for you too. Um, and the Community Foundation does do a lot of posts. We do a lot of advertising and you guys are free to just share that directly from our page to yours as well, if you would like. Um, because we do paid boost behind our post for this. Um, and like I said, you are welcome to create your own stuff. You do not have to use the things in the toolkit, but use something. Don't just get to you know the day of, um, of the event and go, oh, I should probably throw a post up. It doesn't work that well. You might get like a couple of pity donations, but every year there's one nonprofit that gets zero donations. And one of us on the staff is sitting there at, you know, 1150 going, oh, all right, let's put 10 bucks in. Um, and like I said, I am here to help you if you need. Um, I touched on pre-promotion, use your images, consider paid marketing, um, send out some save the date information to your, uh, your loyal followers. Um, nobody likes to be completely bombarded, um, but I would say, you know, give them a heads up now. Definitely make sure your board knows. It always makes me so sad when I see an organization that only has two or three donations and I'm going, where's your board? There's got to be, you know, if your board doesn't care enough, then we've got some issues that we need to work on. Um, and then also, I like to send them either a reminder the night before or the morning of that, hey, all right, now is the time. Go ahead, get that donation in there. Um, and then, you know, sit down and do some brainstorming about your contacts. You know, who do I have that's on our board or on our staff or I volunteer? And what resources do they have? How could they help us? Um, everybody has a great network um, that you can tap into or that, you know, Think about what their strengths are and how um, they can help this campaign be successful for you. Um, and then, you know, just touching base on, you know, what do I say during those promotions? I find that um, self-promotion and writing about yourself or your organization can be one of the most challenging things because you never want to feel like you're bragging, you're boasting, or you're begging for money. Um, so I always say, you know, make sure you're promoting shoregivesmore.org or the shore gives more direct link to your organization. Either is fine. Um, like I mentioned, be uh, personalize the scripts or come up with your own scripts. Think about what really motivates your donors to give. Um, you know, if you're not sure, if you kind of you know aren't feeling very confident about um, some of the posts that you're writing, if you want to send me an email with a couple different um, scripts that you've written and say, hey, do you think this is okay? By all means, you are welcome to. I'm happy to glance over something and be like, hey, I might edit this or, hey, that looks really great. Run with it. Please, by all means, I don't mind helping like that. Um, share your story. Explain the why behind your cause. What, why is it that you love your organization and what, um, what motivates you to do this hard work? Um, and show donors how their gift makes a difference. Um, for example, with Operation We Care, one thing that I did with them because I volunteer with them a lot, is one year I asked a couple of people, um, Operation We Care sends care packages to deployed troops all over the world, send about 2,000 a year. And so one year I asked a couple of um, people who'd received care packages from us, I said, can you just give me a quote and a photo about why, you know, what, dif what difference did this care package mean to you, you know, and how did it impact you? And, you know, you as a delayed person, you don't think about a, oh, here's a care package of, you know, toiletries and snacks, you know, all right, how does, you know, does it sound like the biggest impact? But when those guys would get, my brother was one of the recipients, when he got his care package, he had been on a ship for weeks on end. He was like, this is the greatest thing in the world. And the thing that he loved the most was all the drawings inside the box from little kids and how much joy that brought them to read out loud in their bunks and stuff. So when I was able to get a quote like that, people went, oh, wow that really makes a difference. I'm inspired to get to that cause. So talk about your impact, talk about how what you're doing is making a difference in our community. Um, use your hashtags, promote matches, promote donor incentives. Um, you know, really think about your network. And I think, let's see, we talked about thanking our, thank your donors. Um, your donation reports, you see, um, I think Lauren, you showed yeah. those already. Um, think, you know, make sure if somebody's doing a match for your organization, 
that's a great post to make. Thank them publicly. Say, hey, so and so's agreed to match, you know, five hundred or a thousand dollars. Um, make sure that you're giving them credit for that. And, you know, obviously make sure it's okay with them because some people want to say, stay a little anonymous. Um, thank your board and staff and your ambassadors for participating. Um, at the end, I always send out a press release that announces the total giving. Um, and most of the, it, it also includes a list of, you know, what nonprofits participated in stuff. So your organization will more than likely to some extent pick up some some news coverage um, regardless. Um, but if you have you know a good relationship with a newspaper or um, somebody who's you know has a really great social media pro, um, profile, you know, talk to them, make sure you send that follow-up, say, hey, look how great we did on Giving Tuesday. You know, hey, you know, we just wanted to thank you know these people who really supported us. Um, Include it in, you know, a winter newsletter, you know, hey, it's our, our annual newsletter or it's our annual report. Um, you know, we did this much on Giving Tuesday. We hope to do more. We wanted to thank these people. Um, and and that's, that's a really great, great tool. Um, and then you should be awarded your check by Christmas from us. So um, any questions for me before I turn it back over to those ladies? All right, if you have a question, feel free to reach out to me. <laughs> Thanks everyone for being with us today. I'm gonna to stop sharing. And if you would like to unmute and ask questions or have any dialogue, this is our time for that. Uh, I know we covered a lot today, uh, but we do provide, as you've seen, all of the resources and important dates and timelines inside all of the toolkits. So I would encourage you to, right after this session, log into your organization dashboard and start looking into all of those resources before you forget how to do that <laughs> and then have to give us a call. And we're happy to help you um, troubleshoot after this. Uh, we are using the shore gives more um, email, um, which we talked about, I think several times today, but you can also call our office. Uh, we are here Monday through Thursday, 410-742-9911. We have several staff that can help you. We are remote on Fridays. If you call on Fridays, you won't be able to get us, um, but you can get us through that email anytime. Anyone, uh, does anyone online have any questions? Anything you'd like to dialogue about? If so, feel free to unmute now. I have a question. I have a question. This is Leslie. Hi. Hi. Can you can you hear me? Yep, we hear you. Thank you. It's been very helpful today. So first of all, thanks You're for welcome. everything. Um, my question was, if you could just go over one more time the required posts for the sponsors, um, what exactly you're looking for it briefly. I don't, I came on a tad bit late, but if you could just talk about that for a minute again. Yes, um, we provided information and images for you to make, uh, is it four? Four required sponsor posts, posts before the event and then one after the event, thanking all of the sponsors. We give you their user account names in the marketing toolkit and some images for that. Packet with more inputs to the details out all the requirements as well. Okay, yeah. And so oh. in your resource guide, you'll find all of that information that you need. Okay. But we do just ask that each of you are making some social media posts that talk about social our media. sponsors because they do underwrite the expenses of this campaign for all of us to be able to, to do what we're doing today. Yeah, one per sponsor and then one with all three sponsors. Okay. Mm -hmm. One per sponsor and one post with all three sponsors. Gotcha. Okay. That's what I, thank you. You're welcome. And I may be mixing it, but where is the, the timeline that Victoria shared with us um, on how to build up to your to that uh, marketing day? To Giving Tuesday, it was a timeline she shared. Did you share a timeline? I think all of our timelines are in our participant guide and in the PowerPoint, which are in that marketing toolkit. If you go to your organizational dashboard, like I said, earlier, um, that is where you can find everything. And I'm gonna put this, I'll share real quick, just to remind everybody. I know there is a lot of information that we're 
putting out today. Um, if you go to your organization dashboard, you'll get into Resource Center, and then you can see all of these different things. So inside the boot camp is the information that we presented today. So here's the PowerPoint, here's the guide, and, and the workbook, the step-by-step -step workbook that Lauren showed. So this guide is the 20 some page document that has all of the different things in it, the timelines, the links, the templates, all of that. But again, it's all in your dashboard and under resource center. Is that helpful? Any other questions? Thoughts? Yeah, Heather. Yes. If I want to hashtag the URL mm -hmm. for my organization for donors to give, is there a simple hashtag that I can use? Yeah, yes. Uh, Lauren went over that a little bit, but I'll show you again. Um, let me log, let me get logged in. I'm looking for my password right now. We were encouraging that you all set up a unique URL or an acronym to use during this campaign because that is how you would link people to your own site. So I can show you that. Let me get logged in here. So here is your organizational profile. This is your dashboard. We keep talking about the dashboard. This is your dashboard. These are your important dates. Again, you log into the resource center to see the marketing toolkit. Um, this is what your profile looks like. Lauren had demonstrated all of this stuff, but if you come into your profile right here, you'll see custom URL. It's right next to the logo. So when you log into your profile and you edit it, you have the opportunity to set an acronym right here. And that acronym is what's going to be your URL. It goes on the end of the shortgivesmore.org and it'll be your URL. Okay, hang on one second. Let me show, let me see if I can show this on the front end. We have that set up. I should be able to show it on the front end too. I think it's still confusing some people. So I'll show you. So when you click here, look at this URL up here now. Yeah. It says shoregivesmore.org slash CFES. That is our unique URL, our acronym. So you all need to go do the same thing. And then you will share this direct link out on social media when you want to engage donors. So they don't have to come search for you. They can click right through. Yeah. So if we were a past participant in this, do we not need to change it? Do we use what is it? Do we oh, guys using what was there before? That's a good question. That's a good question. So we have someone in the room that's asking if they were a past participant and had a URL. Should they use the same one or can they change it? That's totally up to your organization. It doesn't matter about consistency. I would say if you already use an acronym in all of your other marketing or in conversation with people, that's the acronym you should use. Like we use CFES as our acronym for everything. So that's why we use that. But um, uh, the shelter that I volunteer for, their acronym is HHEH. -E and so I think I put that in as their shortcut. But it is handy to have a, a URL there so you can create or a shortcut there so you can have that. Yeah. Heather? Yep. So my URL right now says, uh, on my own, it says short gives more slash four steps therapeutic writing program or something. So if I wanted to use a hashtag, do I, I just use the hashtag? I mean, hashtags don't do anything other than they're there. So hashtags are a different function than this URL. Oh. Um, and I just looked, Sandy, your, UL, your, your unique URL is the whole word, four steps right. therapeutic writing. And so that's fine put... if that's what you want there, that's fine. Um, a hashtag is a different right. thing that you use on social media that consolidates all of the posts for that hashtag so that other people can see what activity is going on. So like when we all use the hashtag sure gives more, um, 
want to anybody that wants to see what the full activity of that campaign is can click on that hashtag and see all of the people that are sharing it and posting it but that's really just a social media function it doesn't have anything to do with this website or this url and we do and i see we have a question in um online chat and we do have social media post examples in the marketing kit there's a whole bunch of those that Victoria has pulled together for you. Um, little sentences and paragraphs and phrases already put together. Again, as she said, just make sure you read them and edit them and put your own information in there before you post them, or you will end up with something generic or some other information in there. But feel free to use them. We encourage you to use them so that we all have a consistent message on social media. Yep, and they're in, again, they're in the resource center and these kits <clears throat> right here in this in this place. See the social media post ideas? This is the one that gives you some samples right here. Whole bunch of samples actually. Do you have any guidance for music use? Someone's asking you about that. Yeah, so we had a question in online chat also about music use. Um, that is not something we specialize in. I just asked Victoria and she mentioned that you would probably have to license some music that you were using. We don't really use music in any of our stuff because of the copyright issues. Any other questions, thoughts? Well, we're really excited that you're all with us today. We're really excited to kick off this campaign. Uh, you'll start seeing a lot more about it after we get through these training sessions this week. Um, I would encourage all of you again to go back to your office, log into your dashboard and start looking at the resources that we provided um, so you can keep them fresh in your mind. Um, remember those first couple of slides in this PowerPoint had um, decision points for this month, particularly in the next two to three weeks. And so again, it's important that you go back right now and start those processes. If you're going to have a board match, if you're going to seek a certain incentive, if you're going to consolidate your donor messaging, all of that should be started right now because you can't wait too late and, and jump in on all that. So um, that's all we have today. We're really excited that you were with us and we hope that you all find success. Again, if your organization is not listed on the front end of the website, reach out to us and we will help you with whatever, we'll help you understand whatever compliance issues you're facing. Have a good day.